What's up guys, Shane here from 3D Printing and today we're gonna to take our DIY resin curing station to the next level. Welcome back guys. So in a previous video, you saw me make this DIY uh, curing station, which is just basically a box filled with foil. I have a little turntable here that you set down inside of it. You put the nail curing station on top, you hit the go button, and you let it cure, and it just turns it around. Uh, but I was browsing on Thingiverse, and that's always the bad thing. I mean, I swear, Thingiverse is the, the, the target of the DIY or the 3D printing community. And I found a curing station where this guy had two of these that would kind of lower down over top of this turntable. And it would go up and lower down, and you would have two of these to do it. And I thought, well, that was pretty cool. But the problem was, is that he made it for a CNC. So he would take a piece of uh, six and 12 millimeter thick melanine, and that's how he was able to create this project. Well, I don't have melanine, and I don't have a CNC, but I have a ton of 3D printers and some mediocre design skills. So what I did, is I went ahead and took it into Fusion 360, and I redesigned it to become completely 3D printable. Now, let's talk a little bit about this. Um, the version that I'm going to assemble is not the final, final version. The final version is what I'm gonna learn from assembling this one, which I already know a few things that I've kind of screwed up, and that's gonna be the final version that you can find. The thing to Thingiverse will be down below if you wanna try this out yourself. Now, you are going to need a large form factor printer. So you're gonna need something with a 300 by 300 millimeter bed. Height doesn't matter because you're only going 12 millimeters the thickest part, but you're gonna need a large uh, 3D printer because the base piece alone, you can only print one at a time, but this arm is a one print. Uh, you can do this and some of the support pieces together. So you basically need three prints to make this happen on a large printer. And I went through a lot of different uh, variations. So this one here is the very first one that I did. And this is right off of the, the Thingiverse page from the original maker. And I wanted to see, well, how well is this gonna work out? So I just had some, uh, red PLA from somebody. I don't remember who this was. This might have been the rep wrapper red PLA that I had laying around. But I went ahead and threw this on there and printed it, and I could see it didn't quite fit. So I took what I learned from this piece and I made this one. But before I made this one, I actually took a scan, which I threw it away, but I can show you on the screen capture here. I think I did. Yeah, I threw that sheet away. But I basically scanned in the bottom of the nail star. I just put it onto my scanner, scanned it, pulled that into Fusion 360, and I was able to scale it based off of the original design. I was able to scale it properly because it was really close, but just not quite there. And I knew where it matched up. So I was able to do that and create this one. Now this one made the opening here uh, much better sized for the nail star, at least this particular model. Now every model will be different. So Obviously, I printed this thinking it would work with the nail star of what the guy used. No, 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 didn't work out so well. So if you're gonna buy this exact model, this design will work. Anyways, and I added four holes. So my thinking is that I would line this up on these and I would drill four holes and zip tie them from the inside. And I could use a big zip tie or something around the outside, but having these four anchor points here, pinching those two together, I figured that would be enough to kind of hold it and again, put something around the outside to help. And now this worked, except it was off. So when it would lower down, so let me get the other pieces here, I'll show you these. So this is the, the base plate right here. And these two pieces join together like so. And we're gonna use a, a new product, which I've used very little of, but we're gonna use 3D Gloop to stick this together because it is an amazing uh, glue. Like I've used it a few times and I've been impressed so far. But we're gonna kind of showcase that today's print and it, we're gonna go ahead and glue this together. So when this sits down, you have the arm, which basically goes over and on the, that sits there. And this basically should go over just like that. And you can see there, your thing will spin as the nail stars make it. But this sits too high and it's too far back where it currently sits. So I made this version, which accounts for the mounting holes and the size of the nail star, but not the position. So I put that one away, and I have the final version, well, the almost final version, which is this one, which I had moved the holes in the mounting bracket. So here's my original brackets. Here is my 
new brackets that sit on here. One sits on there like that. And then this will attach there. And this basically makes it almost perfectly center over the uh, nail star and it brings it down quite a bit. And I was able to hopefully get this all to fit. Now this one is gonna be really tight for me to get together. I've actually done some sanding. My desktop is covered here because I had to do some sanding and a little bit of whittle work on these, which I have made the appropriate adjustments, I believe, in Fusion 360. I just didn't want to print these again because I'm going on vacation soon. This video is going to come out well after I'm on vacation, but uh, I wanted to really get this filmed before I went, so I'm pretty sure that's going to work out. If it does, either way, I want you guys to comment on that make, if you guys are going to make it, a comment on that thing, on Thingiverse, so that I know, hey, this works, or no, it needs a little bit of adjustment. I will upload the Fusion 360 file as well. Everything, all of it's in one uh, file for Fusion 360, so if you wanna make adjustments, you can, or tell me, and I'll make the adjustments, and I'll re-upload the parts, because again, they should be there. Uh, I, the thing that was a little hard is that because he CNC'd the parts, he was very exact, and you can do that. With 3D printing, you have to leave a little bit of space in there so I ended up leaving like a 0.2 and a 0.3 area uh, or an offset basically by 0 0.2, 0 0.3 millimeters in certain places to get these to fit real, real nicely. And these fit great on the width wise, but it's the length of the piece that I didn't adjust for. And I didn't think about that when I was originally putting this all together. So I'm going to clean this up. Let's get out the 3D Gloop and let's start gluing this together. All right, for those of you unfamiliar, this is a 3D Gloop PLA. And this is a special solvent from uh, Andrew and Andrew. I met them at Murph 2018, and they actually sent me out some. And again, I've used a little bit for some projects, but not a whole lot. But when you pull it out, it has an applicator. It's fairly thin, but this thing is good. This stuff is good for like it was for gluing, for uh, smoothing, and just general reinforcement, basically of parts. Like they had some crazy things to do uh, with uh, like when they put something together to pull it apart. Like it just makes it so much stronger to just add some of this onto it. Uh, it does have lots of warnings on it and it's not necessarily the safest thing, but it kind of like what glue is safe really. But anyway, so this is what I'm gonna use today for gluing this together. All right, so this is the main part that we need to glue together here. And again, I'm just gonna add some glue to it and stick them together. I'm going to try and do this on my tabletop and hopefully not glue them to the tabletop, but we'll just kind of be careful with that. And basically the friction of my hands will be enough to do that. But before we do that, I'm going to take a sanding block over this real quick, just to go ahead and make sure that we have a nice flat surface. I also have a round over here that we can kind of just take a little bit of elephant footing off, off that bottom there. So that's been sanded, this one's been sanded, we're still nice and dry, and now we're going to go ahead and take a little bit of a gloop, and we're just going to go ahead and brush it on to our part here real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and reinforce it a little bit. Again, this isn't going to be as pretty as a CNC, but it's going to be super functional and it's definitely gonna hold onto these parts. All right, so that is just about dry, almost there. It's already pretty strong, which is fantastic. What I might actually end up doing, this adds a little bit of depth to the bottom, a little bit of material almost on top of there. I might go ahead and add on just some of those like felt, uh, little sticky tabs. I have some of those from like Ikea. Add some on the bottom of this just so that doesn't uh, grind on there. Plus it would kind of be able to slide around easier. But since that is done, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our hinges, our anchor points basically, which are these pieces. And again, there's two of them. They sandwich together just like so, so that I can put them on. And then this arm will go right into here. And it's gonna be held in by a piece of smooth rod. Now this one I didn't cut down yet, so I have to cut this down before I can install it. But either way, I have, I can put this in, and it's gonna be, this is gonna be also held in. There's a, a back point and a front point. So basically, once this is in here, it can go all the way back and it can rest against this hole back here, and then it goes forward, 
it will catch on that front one and that's as far forward as it can go. That can also be adjusted here and there, but I don't think I'll have to. I think we'll be pretty good with that, uh, with that right there. And this one, it does have a little bit of elephant footing on it. It doesn't really matter because it's going to be sandwiched between two of these things, but I might just knock off this top edge here. Uh, I had that really stuck into the uh, Anycubic uh, Ultra Base that really did that. Again, this cutout fits this exact model of the UV active spinner thing, turntable deal. So I'm going to go ahead and push these in and then we will continue on with the build. Oh, right, well, this is pretty much dry now. Let it sit about 15, 20 minutes. While I did that, I went ahead and cut down the piece of eight millimeter smooth rod, which is going to go into these pieces and it is just long enough. I wanted to leave it a little bit extra, but that's okay. But before we go ahead and install that, we need to actually take care of the nail stars first. So again, there's one there. And I've got another one already here out of the box, ready to go. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna set this down onto these. And again, this isn't the, you can see there's a gap here. I filled that in the online model. This side is just cut out just to use less material. It's still plenty strong enough. I'm gonna use this as a guide and I'm gonna go ahead and pop my four holes into here. And I'm gonna do it on the other one as well. So I'm gonna do that real quick as soon as I find my drill bit. All right, so now I've got those four holes drilled. I'm gonna go ahead and put these in from the bottom. From the bottom meaning like the inside of one of the nail curing stations. And we'll go up into the other one. All right, and there is that. That's kind of how it looks. Now, if we look out here, hang on. So look in here, you can see there's this gap up here. It doesn't quite match up perfectly, so I'm gonna to need to cut off that part. Um, I think because I, I extended this 20 millimeters, I forgot to reduce the top by 20 millimeters. So I have to do that, but that's not a huge issue. I can uh, easily do that later. But I wanna see how this thing looks once we put it together. So let me do that. Slide this in part of the way. Lining this up should be fun. There, that was some love taps. So here it's back. We can put on the little dwarly gig and then when you put it forward, completely, completely covers that. It goes a little further than I want it. I would like it. So it kind of hangs down a little bit. I might put maybe a little support right here just something add onto the file just so that doesn't always rest on that bolt. But yeah, lean that back, it stays back like that. Oh, let's plug this in, hang on, hang on. All right, let me get something that's not, I'll just put on a maker coin here. They're both powered on, we'll set them both to 120 seconds. We're gonna turn them both on and then we put it down on there. There it goes. Oh man, this is too cool right here. Basically, we put the turntable in there, turn on our lights, put it down, voila, that is it. Oh man, my workspace is a mess now. Uh, Cause again, this wasn't the, I think the final version. I actually might leave this top piece on there. Maybe get a little bit more rigidity. I don't know, we'll see if I end up changing that up. But I will put all the files so you guys to download down the video description if you guys want to check this out. Uh, I think it's, I, I like it. I think it's a pretty cool project. I think it'll end up working out really well with these prints. It gives a little more power, so you can actually you can do, you can cure a little bit faster. So I can put these all the way down to, they're on 120 seconds right now. So two minutes, it's spinning in there. It's probably done because there's so much power and everything going to this. It should make for some really, really quick curing and get it done. And I actually ended up taking off the tin foil from that because I think it was blocking a little bit of the UV light or this is actually already crapping out on me. So I might need to buy a new one. It came broke, I had to fix it, but I don't know, we'll see how it ends up going. But yeah, this was a super duper fun project and I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you guys wanna make one, go down in the description. Again, there's gonna be links to print this out. You need a 300 by 300 millimeter bed in order to make this work for you. And you're gonna need obviously two of these nail stars and a couple other little pieces of hardware 
and you're off to the races. I did use the eight millimeter smooth rod. I had ordered a bunch of this for another project. So I kind of just had this laying around. They are 100 millimeter lengths that I just cut off the amount that I needed to fit in this. Again, a little persuasion in there. Uh, I'll try to upsize the holes just a little bit. I kind of seemed some were a little bit off and like the M5 holes, those are gonna be a little bit bigger. And I think it is a little wobbly. Maybe I'll make that another version with this a little bit thicker. Cause again, it was 12 millimeters. I just thought that was a little, an excess use of materials. Maybe it actually isn't, or maybe I just have it a little bit too, you know, a little too much tolerance built in there. Maybe if I bolt these down, that'll make it a little bit tighter in there and kind of hold on to it. But yeah, I thought this was super fun. If you guys want to check it out, go down below, buy with those links. I appreciate it because a little slice would you guys buy with those affiliate links comes back here and help me out the channel. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. If not, thumbs down. Either way, talk in the comments down below. Love to know what you guys think about this project. If you guys wanna stay tuned to what's going on, hit that big old subscribe button down there. Hit the bell icon. Get an email notification when I upload new content. If you're gonna help me out financially to do projects like this, become a patron. It takes a dollar to get access to my Patreon feed and the after show when I do them. Other ways you can help out, there is a bunch of affiliate links down below. There's one-time donation links. Again, thank you for helping out. Even if you guys are watching this video, I have no, long, no idea how long it's going to be. Probably going to be a long one. But thank you anyways, guys. So until next time, happy printing.